Hello everyone, I'm Kemmerger here. Welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. In the last video, we did some running around, couldn't get a goblin cache, which annoyed me. Now I ended up promising my time for the evening after the party to a few members of the party. And now, well, things are about to go sideways. Actually, if I knew this, I would have I would have swapped out Will for uh, Lazel to see what happens. Can, can I do that? Can, am I still able to do that? I wonder if I can do that right now. Just because I think that'd be funny. Just to have them walk around and talk about how much they hate me and hate each other. Have a laugh. Nope. Alrighty. But that's not what happened. Well, let's have a, have a talk with Zevor. How's it going? You have no idea how good it feels to see these people smiling. The singing we could probably do without, but even so, thank you. Oh, I guess I... Alright. Moment of truth. The buzz of celebration quiets to a soothing hum. As you approach your bunk, your hand was sought by several, but there is only one night ahead. Whose company will you seek? At least for tonight. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I. Ah. Oh. Definitely not Lazel, but oh god, mm. Mm. I, I'm on good terms with Shadowheart. I think it's fine. And Carlac was just so adorable. I don't want to disappoint her. Carlac, your heart skips a beat. What treasures might this night bestow? Hey, a soldier. I think everyone's asleep. May I? Hello, you. I've been waiting for this all night. Isn't it mad? How good life is. What you mean? Admire your optimism. Yeah, fine. Thank the gods. I was afraid I was the only one. Ten years is a long time to be trapped in the hells. Ten years without a kind word. A touch. When I look at you, I feel real again. Alive. Gods, I want to ride you till you see stars. Hey, don't ask me twice. Let's go. Ugh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't tease you, or myself. I'd give anything to touch you, but I can't. Not until I can be sure I won't burn you. I know some f magic that might help. Sleep on it, maybe. If you've thought of something by morning, I'd love to know. For now, it's enough just to know you care enough to try. I trust you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done. And I promised I would help you however I could. I'm certain a cure for you can be found at Moonrise Towers, but it's complicated. The journey specifically, it's extremely perilous. Though it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. I suppose it was too much to hope we were going to be cured here and now. To Moonrise then. Okay. Wait. There's more you need to know. To get to the towers, 
you'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings, tormented, dangerous souls. Sounds like I got no choice, man. You're half right. You have to get to Moonrise, but you still have a choice of how to get there. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel somewhere in the ruined Temple of Saluna. It leads to Moonrise Towers through the Underdark. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorm built a secret stronghold deep down there, before rallying a whole army of Dark Justicias, Shah worshippers. Dark Justicias? I must see for myself. Aridan and his lot were looking for a way down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. But I think there's more. From this stronghold, Ketherick's forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers. But he was defeated before he could launch an attack. If you can find this place, I'll wager it will reveal a more direct path to Moonrise Towers. And maybe even bypass the worst of the Shadow Curse. Okay, I found the hidden entrance, actually. Already? <laughs> if only I'd gone with you instead of Aradin. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. It seems our fates have aligned. Um, okay. What about the Grove? I've chosen a successor as First Druid, Francesca of the High Forest. A bird's already been dispatched to summon her. Couldn't Nettie take over? I need her to stay focused on her training. The Grove will need a skilled healer in my absence. The Grove needs to move beyond the mistakes of the past. What it needs is an unknown quantity. An outsider who can enforce the Oak Father's teachings without bias. This is why I chose Francesca. She will restore simplicity and purity to the Grove in my absence. All right, let's get going. Indeed. We've quite the journey ahead of us. Well met. Are you sure? And just... This might bite me in the ass. Speak. It is done. All right. Volo! Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. Any research done? My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. Um, okay, it's been about a day. How many times have you done this? I saw you. I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. All right, let's do it. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. Okay, I'm just going to endure this as long as possible. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. Okay, I'm enduring. Pain shoots through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. 
I think I have it. The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Okay. I deserve this, because I'm going to have to talk to Shadowheart after this, and that's not going to be a fun conversation. Volo carefully withdraws the needle from your eye, then reaching into his bag. He produces an ice pick. Okay, let's do this while I have the energy not to kill you. Volo slowly brings the ice pick closer to your eye. Now, don't move. Okay. Cold metal presses against the skin beneath your brow. And then, tap, tap, stab. Do you feel that? Huh? We have the blighter on the run. I agree. It's a feisty critter. Just a little further. Volo tears the pick from your brain with a violent jerk. Your eye plops down into the mud. Tret. He pauses, looks down at your eye, and recoils slightly as it sinks into the mud. There appears to be an amount of cosmetic damage. You knocked out my... I Please, try not to overexert yourself. You're in a rather fragile state at present. I can't help but feel partly responsible. Uh, perhaps there is something more I can do. Take this. A far superior relic to that old jelly you were chained to. Try it on for size. And, um, it was very nice to have met you. I'm sure you'll sort out your little brain problem one way or another. Far away from here, if you've a heart. Terribly sorry, my friend. Ta. Oh, see invisibility. Probably because of the friggin' new eye I got. Shame I can't see it that well. Anyway, alright, I gotta take my medicine. Drink. Uh, where's my other potion? Ah, here we go. Okay, there we go. Whew. Scratch. Hope you're keeping well, friend. I'm gonna pet you. Very stressed. All right, let's talk to Carlac first, I guess. Hey, you. Um, actually, let's talk to Shadowheart first, see what happens, since I promised to meet her. May the darkness protect you. You seemed intrigued when Halsey mentioned Dark Justicars. I was. He mentioned Dark Justicias, and we've come across other signs of a Sharon presence during our travels. I'm not sure I can dismiss that as a coincidence. Okay. What are you thinking about? If you have any idea. Good, we're good, we're very good. I think we're fine for the time being. So let's, uh, wait, try to cool down. Ooh, this is 
clever. Might even work. Come here. Hmm. I'm dizzy. And you, are you all right? No, but worth it. I hope that's true. Because I'm hoping for seconds, thirds, and fourths once we find a way to cool off this engine. Yeah, believe me. Mine too. Soon enough, you're going to be mine. But until then, I'll play nice. You have your fun with the angry alien till then. I don't mind sharing. But keep a piece left over for me. Hmm? Okay. I will then. Huh. So, Carlac is okay with me and the ink. I'm gonna experiment a little bit more on that. But until then, actually, if that's the case, there's a lot of burrows I might need to I might need you at. So let's uh, drop Lazel. Speak. Chuck. As you speak. Oakfather's blessings to you. What do you know about the parasite? I studied one up close. Closer than most would care to be to those things. A drow attacked me and I defended myself. Afterwards, I was able to examine the tadpole that emerged. Hideous, but fascinating. Like nothing else in nature, I'm glad to say. How are you faring here at the camp? <laughs> Wonderfully. If I'm honest, the grove was too comfortable for my tastes. I felt removed from nature. I'll miss my books. But I can find all the wisdom they contain out here, first hand. Yeah, you'll find plenty of books, man. Is that so? <laughs> well, nature does abhor waste. I will keep watch. Thank you. I had a feeling time in your company would prove fruitful. Okay. Gail, why are you here now? Wait, Will, sorry, God. Welcome to the League of the Lone Eye, my friend. Not to minimize the pain of Volo's poking and prodding, but I promise you'll be used to the prosthesis in no time. Besides, I find it gives one an air of mystique. No one's more intriguing than a man with one eye. Huh, it is a slightly different color. I have a more yellowish in my original eye, but this has a slight blue to it. Okay. Well. Alright. Gale! Come! We are to journey. What's on your mind? With... Alright, everyone. Gather your shit. We are departing. At least the merchants here. That's good. It'll take a while for us all to recover, but you've helped us take the first step. Of course. All right.
Might as well drop some of the excess weight I got. Oh yeah, do you have any new potions I could use? That reminds me, yeah, potions. Supplies. Okay. Um, okay, let's see if I can find a balance. Alright, I think that's relatively good. Okay. I'm gonna try. It, it's been a day, so maybe maybe it ref maybe it refreshes. When did I get the boost? Pretty sure my health was not that at level 5 earlier. Please give me something. Nope. 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 It, it's lost forever. Alright.
So as long as I get to Moonrise Temple, but not... So once I get into Moonrise Temples... So if I can go into the Underdark, complete all that, then double back and do the Mountain Pass, I might be able to double dip. bad I can't have a house and, you know, join us. Could really use a druid. All those weird burrows. I mean, I probably could. Not a chance I'll fit in there. Can't attack it, so. painting could ever do its strange beauty justice. But perhaps our story might when we return to the surface. again. Nope. I am snapping my tools. I would have to roll, like, almost a 15 or higher, just to make this work. There we go! <sighs> I'll lockpick this. It was easier to get in the chest. Huh. Helm of Smiting. When you apply a condition of one of your smite spells, you gain your charisma modifier. Wait a minute. Karlak! You do... You do, uh... Yeah, you can do Branding Smite and Searing Smite, so you actually could benefit from this. Oh, gods, that looks ridiculous. All right, but at least now, when you apply a condition, when you apply a condition with one of your smiting spells, you gain temperate. Oh, apply a condition. Um, prevent it from turning invisible. Deals fire damage, and it sets him on fire. So that might work. And you gain some. Hmm. 
before I go into the Underdark proper, let's keep exploring. Ah, a place. Oh, forgot to switch back. Minotaur. What does it think it's gonna do? More effort than a pit of spikes. Credit where it's due. Well, I guess that was the keys. eerie how the lights turned on when I did that. I'll just give that to Gale. Not good. Opinion, Shadow Heart. May the darkness protect you.
Uh, what? Careful. If we can hear it, perhaps it can hear us. They are coming. You are coming. Huh, what's this? Slender drow blade impales the stone before you, keeping a silent vigil. Oh. Well, let's uh let's rip this sucker out. What are with my dice right now? There we go. It feels like you're warring with ten people for the blade, but with another hard yank, the weapon slips free from the stone. All right. What's it do that compares? God. No oh, it's a long sword, that's why. Fellow are alive. The sword hums in anticipation, ready to. Oh, it's like a true. It's a. Yeah. This drow inscription. Though I have to leave you, I will dance for all. Oh, it's a drow illustrary thing. Interesting. Hmm. Almost dead. Oh. Hey. These things have stayed interesting. One day I'll catch a break. Oh, there's more of these things. Let's uh, let's figure them out. Oh, you gotta do a check in order to. That leads to a lower region. What's what's higher up? Like what's this way? I know there's a plant in the underdark around here. Oh, Minotaur. Amulet of the Unworthy. Grants resistance to slashing damage, but vulnerability to bludgeoning. Oof. Before me. 
I wonder. Yeah, that's near the smuggler's thing. Yeah, that led back to... okay. Broken bones. Must have fallen. That's that's highly possible. All right, that'll take me back there. to cause confusion. Best not get too close. That might be worth a look. Alright, what did I pick up? Some scrolls, some shit. See, we're doing pretty good for ourselves. Stupid possible boulette. Hmm. Alright, so this would have led to here, and that is totally death on a stick. So let's tr let's double back the way we came. And go the other way. I know there was a uh Complete the masterwork. Discover Susar trees. Okay. Ah! 
Oh, that's a boulette. Motherfucker. Alright, you're going down. Try me. You can't always be a gentleman. What should I do? On my way. <laughs> Covered. Ironically, that's a monstrosity. Alright, we gotta kill this thing quickly. Blood Guzzler's Garbs. It's uncommon. When an enemy damages the wearer, the wearer gains wrath for one turn. Plus damage to melee weapons. Okay, that's... I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks cool, but... These boots have seen everything. Get confused by one, blown up by the other. Fall by my hand. Through one creature sing many voices, the harmony of an entire collective. Sovereign, he has come. He is here. The choir fades. A single melody rises above the others, brassy and commanding. I am Sovereign. You see a vision. Your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The Sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose. <sighs> Alright, I'll... you know what? I'm gonna be honest. Fungal roots weave through your mind. Seeking your true intent. Then the Sovereign drones a new melody. Cautious, but welcoming. I can mend neither skin nor spirit. But we still might commune. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. The Sovereign expects you. Okay. 
Hmm. Oh, Mike and a colony. Hmm. A merchant? Down. Hmm. Hello there, Blurg. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull, the spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg, proud member of the Society of Brilliance at your service. Or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than that of the fungi. I've never heard of the Society of Brilliance. Understandable. We are small in number, and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? Honestly, I kind of got lost here. A common phenomenon in the Underdark, I'm afraid. Could I ask what you were searching for to begin with? Oh, might as well say the whole story. You were infected by an illithid tadpole? It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Omelium! I hope this is important, Blurg. My Zerkwood samples need constant attention. It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside his head, but he hasn't turned. No ceramorphosis? That's impossible, but intriguing. Are you looking to have it extracted? Um... I am so glad Lazelle is not here. H how? I have broken free from the Elder Brain's yoke. I no longer serve the Grand Design. I ask that you refrain from violence, while I respect that your opinion of my kind may not change. Um, what is the Grand Design? A collective quest to eliminate the Gith and enslave all other humanoids. If that settles matters for the time being, would you like a diagnosis? Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within. Um, okay. As the Meloan's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive. Awake. Almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. Can you extract it? No. It appears to be shielded from physical and magical influence. And even without the shield, the extraction would involve severe cranial trauma. Huh. Um... Well, bashing my skull is kind of what uh, part of the day. You would not survive the outcome. The tadpole must be completely crushed, and your skull along with it. But not to worry. Should you transform, I will happily perform a new examination. Uh, what about? I'm going to talk to you about the ship. A nautiloid. Fascinating. I have never set foot on one myself. They were our warships during the greatest eras of the Illithid Empire. We ruled the entire astral plane from their decks. 
The design was lost when the Gith rebelled and ended our dominion. Well, thank you for the information. Of course. I am sorry I cannot assist you in its removal. But I have an idea. Oh, perhaps I should start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. But isn't the stasis what's stopping it? I do not intend to shatter its protection. I need only bypass the interference that prevents me from communicating with the lava. Okay. A tincture distilled from a collection of rare mushrooms. They have subtle psionic influence. I would require a fresh tongue of madness and timusk spores. But be warned, in their natural state, both of these mushrooms can be quite dangerous. Timusks cause confusion in those that approach them. The tongue is self-explanatory. All right, how do I do it? The Underdark, of course, although they are quite rare, and their discovery perilous. Hmm. I imagine Lenore would have them in her possession. She served Mistra as a cleric. All right, where does she live? The southwest when I last saw her, although her tower does have a tendency to move. Okay. Why would the cleric have such mushrooms? She is quite fond of her garden. Lenore has always been a lonely sort. Nature was her only companion. I offered her the chance to join the society, but she refused. Her experiments on Sousa Bark took priority. Okay, I'll come back when I got him. May your travels be safe and swift. Okay. Now. Welcome back. Have you made any new discoveries? Yeah, I've never seen a hobgoblin like you before. The feeling is mutual, friend. I have only passing familiarity with the surface races. But I found that there is as much to learn from an individual as there is from a community. So it is with the Myconids. They live in harmonious unity, but each has a unique personality. Really? Yes, but it has abundant natural resources. Spores, water orbs, Trillimac. I've studied them for years. Well, oh, what have they uncovered? This is not a wasteland. It is a glorious ecosystem. Every civilization here could thrive without conflict. Oh, got anything to trade? I do enjoy a good bargain. If anything in my private collection is to your liking. Oh, you got some nice stuff already. Boots of Gentral. Uh-huh. Ooh, that might be good for Gale. Ooh, Circle to Blasting! Baneful. Oh, nice short sword. Lifebringer. When they gain lightning charges, they gain temporary hit points. That is ironic. Uh, what else? Sunwalker's Gift, where I can see in the dark up to... Uh-huh. Uh, can shoot additional when they cast Magic Missile. Ooh. When you burn an enemy, you gain two turns of heat. Oh, the temptation. Okay. Oh, Mel's first staff. <laughs> Mel's acid arrow. Oh, yeah. Hill Giant Finger. I could use that. Hmm. 
Oh, circle to blasting. Yeah, well, you do get Scorching Ray. But I'll trade you a few things I got. Very well. All right. There we go. Okay, so... I get a lot of lightning charges, and at the start of the turn, gain momentum. But... Oh, yeah. Now, at the start... Yeah, so, while the gain thing, I also gain temporary hit points. If you run out of lightning charges. So, when it takes damage... Well, let's see. Okay, so this is how it works. When I dash or take similar actions, I gain lightning charges. Now, when I take damage while having lightning charges, you got to make a dex save. Then, while I, when I gain lightning charge, I gain hit points. That means I must, I have to always start my turn with a dash. That's how I do it. That's how I'm supposed to basically be an ultimate badass in all of this. Okay. Now I got some hill giant finger. Now, I can... Something, I don't know. Okay. I think we're looking pretty good for ourselves. Oh, hi. Ah, well. Hmm. Sad. I couldn't let myself feel sad in the hells. Letting my guard down would have been a death sentence. And letting, say, a cambion near me would have been disastrous. I thought it best to just to keep my distance. But loneliness that deep gets into the marrow. Now that I'm here, among friends, I can feel it burning out of me. Little by little, step by step. Okay. 
All right, so I think this is where we're going to wrap up. So, yeah, so that means in order to get this entire combo to work, I need to dash at the start of my turn. So if I start if I dash at the start of my turn, then I could probably use one of my bonus action attacks or something, I don't know. Dashing is the best option. It gets me in that situation. So, yeah, that's the only downside. I have to dash and I gain lightning charges. Um, the lightning charges, once I have five, so that will gain me three. I gain three temporary hit points. And if they attack, and if, and if the attacker attacks me, they have to do a saving throw or get shocked. So it all hypothetically does pay off. But in any event, thank you, like, what was it? I think there was something else, another armor I picked up or something. Something about burning. No, it was, it was a piece, it was like boots. Like, if I did that, but I can't do that because that destroys the entire ensemble. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Share, subscribe, let me know you think. Leave comments below, and I'll be with you next time. Thank you, and goodbye.